Good morning, everyone, or maybe good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. It's Sunday morning brunch with Rich Catino and Pete Pardo. Uh, good morning, Rich. We were just talking about uh, we're getting assaulted with snow shortly. Yes. And there's no way getting out of it. We're all getting hit. Mm hmm. So Doesn't I guess. Matter what, where what, you are. Yeah, if you're on the east coast of the United States, um, yeah. this nor'easter is coming. So, uh, hey, why not? Yeah sit back watch the snowfall right. and listen right. and talk about candle mass right right who are from sweden so they got a lot of snow there yeah they're used to that they're used to that and the epic yeah. doom kind of falls in line with the kind of gentle quiet snow falling outside and everything right. kind of shutting down and why not yeah. um so we got uh all right so here's the deal with candle mass they've got 12 full-length studio albums They've got right. a shitload of EPs. We're not going to talk yes. about the EPs today because that would take us down and even further, as Rich said, the right. rabbit hole. Um, but yes. we're going to talk about the 12, the dozen studio albums, uh, right. which, you know, there's a lot of really good stuff on these albums. Uh, I think, mm -hmm. I don't think this band ever released a terrible album. There's a couple of albums that are definitely weaker than some of the rest, but man, you terrible, talk about a band. Terrible sounding. Terrible sounding. Oh, yes. Also. Yes, I will say yes. that. Yes, I will yes. say that. Yeah, but yeah. a band that uh, early in their career knocked it out of the park, late in their career yeah. have knocked it out of the park. It's the middle period that's a little kind of dicey here. So, right. um, so I'm curious to see how Rich has uh, ranked these. And like, yeah. a, we, we don't compare notes, so I have no idea where these albums fall in Rich's list. And I'm going to have him kick us off with his number 10. I'm mean, sorry, number 12. Um, 12. But I will say, that there's a consistency with candle mass. Yes. It's that it's that melodic vocal. You're always getting melodic vocal. The riffs, the guitar tones, the production, the mix, and the keyboards change from album to album. That's what you're getting. That changes. Yeah. Yep. You're getting melodic vocals always and singing, but it you know, there's a consistency with the style because it's doom. What are you gonna do? It's gonna be doomy, it's gotta be Sabbathy. You know, it's gotta have those at times, not always, because that's why I like candle mass a lot. They have those rhythms that are they have movement to them. They don't, yeah. they're not like stuck, you know, like too doomy. So they have that mix with their songs. It's either a slow song or a more up tempo song, maybe a mid pace song. And they do that with all their albums, which makes them really a unique listen. Yeah. And I think uh, the w other constant factor too, you know, I mean, you got this guy who's the de facto leader of the band, Leif Edling. He's the bass player and like one of the main songwriters. I mean, this guy knows what he's doing. He knows doom. And I think if you listen to, he has been, you know, one of the constants throughout this entire career of this band. And then if you listen to right. the other side projects that he's done, this guy gets it. And I think, and, and you hit the nail on the head too, all their albums, it's not just these slow doomy dirges throughout every album. Sure. You got them but they throw in these faster paced, like galloping right. tracks. Yes. Which, yes. Yeah. They're doomed, but they're like, they're more in line with like the new wave of British heavy metal at times. Right. So it's, it's yes. almost like this, like yeah. Iron Maiden meets Sabbath type of thing that they created with these over the top vocals. And you're right. Every vocalist right. that's ever sang for this band is very good to great. Right. And there's three, right. If I count it correctly. Uh, let's see. Well, if you go, because Gore and Edmund sang with them for a little bit, but he didn't appear on a studio album. I think he's on one. Not on album. So, yeah, so it's Lundquist, right. it's Messiah, it's uh, Robert right. Lowe, Rob uh, Lowe, Lundquist again, and then you got the other guy. Uh, what is his name? I'm he's on uh, six. What's his name? Uh, Thomas Vickstrom. And then there's on. Bjorn Flodquist. So I think this, so what are there, five? I don't know, something like that. There's but a hand. There's a hand. Here's on album. I think that appears on albums that appears on albums is three. You have the original singer from Epicus, then you have Messiah up to Tales of Creation, then you have Chapter Six, which is the guy I just mentioned. What's his name again? Uh, I'm looking it up right now. Thomas Vickstrom. Yeah. yeah, and then the other guy who's after him. That's, that's Bjorn Bjorn Dac Flood Dac Bjorn Floodquist. Right, and then you've got Rob Lowe. No, yeah, Messiah was on Candle Master in 2005. And then with King of the Grey Islands, you got Rob Lowe. For okay, three so, hours. Let's, so let's count them. So we got Lang, uh, Johan Langvist started and now is back in the band. Messiah's two. Um, right. You got that uh, Thomas, what did we say? Thomas, Thomas Chapter Six. So that's three. Right. 
four right. is uh, Bjorn Flodqvist, and five right. is uh, Robert Lowe. And Robert I, Lowe. I guess it, it it makes sense to look up. So did Gore and Edmund perform on any of the EPs? Because if not, then it's then it's four. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. While you're, while you're, are you on their Wikipedia page by any chance? What's that? Are you on their Wikipedia page by any chance? Because we could probably look that up. Yeah. Which album should I look at? Um, I don't know. Just uh, look at like the timeline. uh, I guess. Hold on. I I have that. uh, I had it up as well. Um, Former members. uh, Let's see. Um, Oh, Matt's not Gore and Edmund. Matt's Levin. I was talking about. Matt's Levin was on vocals from. 2012 to 2018 and let me just see if he appeared on any of the um doesn't seem like he was on an album no he wasn't on an album so maybe he was on an ep 2012 to 2018 you got okay he was on he was on the death thy lover ep thy and lover? the house of doom ep so there you have it okay, okay. so matt's okay. So not an official album yeah right yeah not an official studio so album not- yeah yeah, I don't know why I was thinking right. Gore and Edmund, so, unless Gore and Edmund did some live stuff with them. But yeah, Matt's Matt's Levin is the guy who was with them for because they were because uh, they both sang on an Ingve album. Yeah, probably right. <laughs> yeah, Matt's Matt's is another on, one of those Swedish guys that played with Ingve yeah. and uh, yeah, exactly. Matt's is on Facing the Animal. Yeah, which is a great album. And then yeah. Gorn is on Eclipse. I want to say right. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So the one after, I yeah. think. Okay, so pretty good my 12, I'll go with uh, Dactylus Glomerita. <laughs> Merata. However we say that, right? <laughs> Which came out in 97, I think, right? Uh, or, yeah, 97 yeah. or 98, something like that. 97. Yeah. So I didn't really enjoy this album. It's got a bad guitar tone and drums. It's like stoner, space rock, doomy. Like when you listen to the song Dust Flow and um, I still I still see black has spooky keys for the accent, and then you got Car Car Thago uh, is more candle mass, yeah. more traditional candle mass. It's tough pronouncing some of these words. I guess they're in Swedish. Carthago, yeah, I don't, know. I don't know how they say that. Yeah, possibly, something. yeah, something. Um, and then you got abstract, but with a K, abstract sun, which is very distorted sounding too. Um, yeah, I don't really like this album very much. Not a good, not a good sound. Not a good mix. Yeah, it was kind of a weird period for them. I think. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get to that one in a second. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I had a hard time with my last two because they're. I think they both have similar problems. Even though neither album really sounds alike. I'm gonna go with from the Thirteenth Sun, which is the next album right. after that one from '99. Right. So this is the right. second album with uh, Bjorn Floodquist on vocals. Um, right. And it's, yeah, it's weird. It's like this kind of like doomy stoner metal space Rocky thing, right? Like, yes. there's this, but you know what? I think what it comes down to, and especially, it's especially even more evident on the one you just named. I mean, yeah. Candlemass was defunct, right? They were, they weren't in existence at the time. And right. Leif Edling was putting together this new band called Abstract Algebra. And that's the right. kind of music right. he wanted to do. But the record uh, label were like, you know, well it'd be easier for us to sell it as a Candlemas album. So meanwhile, he's got all these other guys who were not members of Candlemas prior, and yeah. they're putting out these two albums with under the Candlemas banner. And it's doesn't mm-hmm. really, I mean, it, it sounds like Candlemas to an extent, but not. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll get to the one you just mentioned in a minute, but I'm, I'm going to go with from the 13th sun and this it's weird on this album. It's almost like they decided, all right, we're going to kind of do, a tribute to the very first Black Sabbath album. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it kind of starts off that way. You know, the first song, Taut, is got the, you know, the, the, dong, the, the and, and, the, and the, the rain yeah. and the wind and all this kind of stuff. And yes. it sounds, yeah. but it's like really, really raw. I mean, the production on this album is like, yeah. what, I mean, one of the things that I always loved about the Candlemas records, especially the early ones and the later ones, I mean, big production yeah. values. And right. then you have them on this album. It sounds like demo versions of, you know, teenage Black Sabbath back in 1969 or something like that. Right. It's just really weird. I mean, it's not like it's not a it's not a bad album, but it's just like re- I mean, like uh, Bluma app. Not good. <laughs> it's got this like gothic 
Sabbathy early yeah. Doom thing, and it just and, and you know mixed with space rock like Zog is another right. kind of doomy space rock song. You got the uh, Cyclo right. F Mythos, uh, ten minutes of more yeah. kind of like Sabbath worship. It's good, but it's almost like it, it sounds like this lineup, right? Which is the lineup that's long forgotten in the, in the history of this band, trying to sound mm-hmm. more like early Black Sabbath than trying to sound like Candlemass. If that makes any sense, right? It'd be more of like a Leif uh, Edling uh, solo album, or right? Something. E- exactly, exactly. And uh, it, like I said, it's not terrible, but I'm just I'm amazed at like the low um, kind of lo-fi production value yeah lo-fi production value yeah. this album and the one you mentioned are it's just it's so these two albums are like so different in their catalog yeah. it's like they don't sound like the same band and if you if you right. read into the history of them they weren't supposed to be the same band right so right. i mean it's the, i guess well, this is music for nation's fault they're the ones who wanted these out as candlemas albums and they don't work yeah. as candlemas albums i don't think Right. It could have been um, called that other name. What was the name you said that he wanted to do it under? Abstract Algebra. Yeah, Abstract Algebra. Could have put these two albums out under that name and it probably would have worked better. Yeah, I think so. I think so. But neither one is terrible. It's flip, minor flip with yours. So that's my 11 from the 13th Sun. It's all the same points you said. But if you look at, I looked at their Wikipedia and it says that it's dedicated to the greatest band of all time, Black Sabbath. That was in the liner notes. So you can obviously hear it in that you know it does i did write down that it has those sabbath like mellow breaks in the songs too yeah, yeah which is total sabbath worship you know on the first three sabbath albums yeah yeah and he got uh what is that r a r x n g eight nine one the songs are uh, bizarre like, on these yeah, <laughs> yeah has uh has synthesizer sounds on that one yeah so it's a little bit of experimentation on this album too yeah yeah yeah, it's, usual it's not terrible um it's just it's just weird and uh yeah and my number 11 is Two. dactylus glomerata obviously we both flip-flop these but <laughs> i think they're both like on the same pain yeah. you know what's interesting about this album is it's got michael amott is on this album from mm-hmm. uh you know arch enemy and arch spiritual enemy. beggars yeah and you have to wonder so this is 98 i'm trying to think when was the first spiritual beggars album I'm wondering if Michael got the bug to do Spiritual Beggars after doing this album, or did he already have that going? I don't remember exactly when Spiritual Beggars' mm-hmm. first album came out. But anyway, uh, but yeah, this is more, it, it's it's like this weird space rock stoner album. Some good stuff on there, but like a couple songs almost sound like Hawkwind. I love yeah, Hawkwind, but I, do I want Candlemas to sound like Hawkwind? Yeah, you know, right. not really. It's no. probably those keyboards, maybe that that's yeah. There's there like these right? synths going on here, and this like really kind of weird, kind of spacey atmosphere, which uh, again I don't dislike, um, but it just it just doesn't sound like a Candlemas album to me. Yeah. So um, true. Yeah, the, these two albums are like a weird anomaly in the, anomaly in this ca- catalog because I think once you get past these two, everything else is pretty damn good to freaking great, right? I mean, that's yeah just how it goes from here. So yeah. All right, now that we got those two out of the way. <laughs> and so there's the top 10. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'll start mine off with uh, King of the Grey Islands. Cool title. They got some really good titles, too. They do. For Doom. They do. Right? So this is, uh, thanks. There you go. 2007. And this is the first one with Rob Lowe, who I really, I liked him in the band. He's a hell of a three albums. I thought he was, yeah. yeah, great singer. Who he came from um, another band. What was that band called? The, the other Doom band? Um, Solitude Eternus. They're great. Solitude Eternus. Yes. <clears throat> I would say anybody who's watching this who likes Candlemas but has never listened to Solitude Eternus. Right. You don't know what you're missing. I mean, they're, it's, yeah. it's almost identical type music. Just really good, epic sounding right. melodic Doom. Just crushing stuff. So, And they don't have a lot of albums. And this is... like maybe a handful of albums. Yeah. So this is two years after the Candlemas self-titled one. When yeah. Messiah came back and then he left. Yeah. Um, so this I thought was a great uh continuation, you know, pick up where that left off. You got uh Emperor of the Void after a little intro, which is really heavy and aggressive to kick off the album. Um, you got 70s classic rock keyboard sound on Devil Seed. Do you hear that also? Yeah, they started using a little bit of Hammond organ uh, from time to time in the latter yeah. part of their career, which, I, you know, I don't have an issue with because, you know, Leaf is a no, big cool. band of, of Purple and Heap and, and those type of bands. Yeah. So, you know, 
makes sense. That's cool. And like I said earlier, it's guitar tones, keyboards, and the mix and the production, which separates a lot of these albums. You know, you're getting different keyboard sounds, yeah. which is nice. You know, so they all all don't sound the same. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. You know, aside from getting your aside from getting your doomy riffs, like I said earlier. Yeah. So uh, what else? You got a uh, Demonia Six and Destroyer, which have ominous riffs. I wrote that down too. And uh, what's the other one? Clear Sight is a class has a classic romp. I thought. Yeah. Classic candle mass movement to it. Yeah. So yeah, it's an enjoyable album. I like it quite a bit. Um, I think it, it's worth mentioning that uh, Leaf, I mean, the guy's busy as all hell all the time, but he started up this right. other band a number of years ago called Avatarium, who were on Nuclear Blast right. Records. And that's like, it's kind of like a, a Candlemas offshoot, but with female vocals and a little right. more of like a, like a kind of like epic metal and right. folk and prog element going to right. it. And there's a big like rainbow rising feel on those albums with the keyboards. So I think that's kind of also where it kind of bleeds into the music of Candlemas too in recent years, you know, which not necessarily uh -huh. a bad thing. So, yeah. All right. My number 10, I'm going to go to 1992's chapter six, which, uh, you okay. know, Messiah is gone already by this point in time, that classic lineup of the band didn't actually last too long. When you really look at the number of years, uh, and this is the one and only album with uh, Thomas Vickstrom on lead vocals. I don't know where he came from, uh, but he's got a really good voice. He reminds me, you know, it's funny. Messiah leaves, they bring in this guy and the album is still pretty doomy, but it takes on more of like a traditional metal sound to me. And the guy's vocals remind me a little bit of like Zach Stevens from Sabotage and Circle to Circle with a little bit of... Uh, Jeff Scott Soto, for like the way Jeff sounded on those early Ingve albums. So it kind of changes the flavor of the music a little bit. I think it's there's really not a lot of slower stuff on here. It's more of like kind of fast paced uh, wow. classic metal and doom. And it's really good. I mean, you know, you got Prophet, which uh, really heavy song. And there's that Hammond organ we talked about, which shows up in that song. Uh, you got Water Witch, right. really heavy, but has almost like this weird kind of psychedelic element to it, which I kind of dig. Uh, Psalms for the Dead is good. Mm. Uh, the Sound of Dying Demons, Black yeah. is Time. Really, really good album. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading the wrong freaking song title, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I, all right, I totally screwed that one up. All right, let's let's back it up. This is what happens when you have all these notes and everything starts bleeding into each other. All right, so right. I got the song titles mixed up here. Julie Lasts No More is the song I'm talking about. Um, Where the Ruins right. Still Speak, really, really good. Uh, Ebony Throne, it's got some great Lars Johansson, or Johansson, I should say correctly, guitar solos. Uh, like I said, I think it's more of a straightforward album, but mm. it's okay. Right. And it, uh, but it's funny because this, you know, Messiah left the band. I remember at the time, all of us metal fans were so disappointed that he wasn't in the band anymore that we all ignored this album. It's almost right. like, you know, and you hear it a lot these days. It's like, well, no such and such in the band. The band doesn't exist for me. Right. And that's how, kind of how a lot of us took yeah. this back in the day. But, you know, you, revisiting this album once again, uh, it's actually not a bad album at all. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, it's just a little bit different, but some really epic songs on here. Like I said, I like the, I like Thomas Vickstrom as a vocalist. I think he brings a different element to this band. He, like I said, reminds me of Zach Stevens, yeah. Jeff Scott Soto. And yeah. some of these songs have more of like a sabotage type sound to them, at least to my ears. So. Yeah. I, I, I gotta find my paper. I got three papers with notes. This and of course, me, me, me naming all those wrong song titles is foreshadowing my next pick, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I, wrote, oh, I wrote down for chapter six, he has a higher range too. He sings higher as well. Yeah, he definitely does. He's probably yeah. the more higher. He gets a little bit higher than everybody else does too. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Good singer. I don't know whatever happened to him after this, but I, I'd never heard his name again, but a really good singer. Okay, so now we're at nine, right? Yeah. So I get these notes straight. <laughs> So going to yeah, the, no, don't make the door of <laughs> so we're going to the door of doom. So you have that one? Uh, I, I certainly do. Cool, nice cover. Reflects the original cover, right? Epicus. Yeah, it totally does. Well, I think I think they did that on purpose because you got you know Johan's back in the band, so it's kind of like you know, back. The, the circle completes, right? right? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's see. I wrote down under the ocean. You got the melodic start to uh, 
Yeah, you got the melodic vocal starting quick. It gets quick um, to the angry part. You got the bridge of the blind. It's acoustic guitar and keyboards. I like that. That's nice. It's totally different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't think they really ever do that. It's so very rare cool. to hear any acoustic guitar in any of their albums. Yeah. Right. So that's nice. Nice change. Let's see what else. You got a Death's Wheel, which has a retro 70s riff, I think, to that one. And Black Trinity is more distorted, a little heavier. Yeah. So a little bit of change, a little bit of change in the guitar sound on those two songs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a solid return. Eight songs with him back. I like it. Yeah. That one song really adds a good dimension to it. The um the, the acoustic song, Bridge of the Blind. Yeah. Yeah, I uh I listened to that album a ton when it first came out in 2019. Mm -hmm. It was one of my, I think it was in my top 10 of the year. Uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. So I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes, I guess. Okay. All right, so now let's get back to the one I was talking about before that at a turn here. So Psalms for the Dead from 2012. Right. Uh, Rich held it up. Rich, Rich automatically grabbed the, he started hearing me name the uh, the song titles. And I was like, all right, what's, what's right. going on here? So yeah, so this is the last album with Robert Lowe. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, at the time, so this was what, nine years ago, this was originally intended to be the final Candlemas album. Uh, okay. They made some statements early on, which they later kind of retracted. But, uh, you know, that would be the last album till the mm -hmm. most recent one, 2019. So that's seven years, a long time in right. between records. Um, another really strong one. I like the three with Robert Lowe quite a bit. Uh, like I mentioned before, Prophets is cranking tune. There you got the Hammond organ. So Rich and I talked about how the Hammond organ's finding its way into the band's mm -hmm. music in recent years, which I'm totally for. Um, yeah. Water Witch is the heavy psychedelic song I mentioned, Psalms of the Dead, and uh, The Sound of Dying Demons is great, Black as Time. I, I think it's a really strong record. I like it quite a bit. Um, yeah. I, I, all their recent stuff, I think, are, is very, very good. Uh huh. I, I wrote down uh, gothic keyboard accents, too. Yeah. yeah. As well. Yep. Yeah, it works. All right, so we're at eight, right? Number eight. So I'm going to chapter six for eight. Uh, see, I got to go to the track listing. So that's with Thomas Vickstrom. And hold on. Do you have that? You don't have that album on you? No, I don't. I never had a physical of that. Yeah, I got to get that one. So it's not as doomy, I don't think, yeah, on that sound on this album. You know, it's still doomy, but not as doomy. So the same songs you talked about too. It's got um, like uh, Julia laughs no more, cleaner lead guitar tone too. It's not as heavy, not as doomy. Um, and you got traditional metal lead guitar accents in the songs too. Yep. You know, a little more shredding going on. Um, what else did I write down? Where the ruins still speak, the singer sounds like Tony Martin. Yeah. At times, yeah. I thought. He's the other guy I was going to mention who kind of the, he hits uh, on his tone a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And what else you got here? Uh, Temples of the Dead. It's got the retro 80s keys, I thought. Yep. In that one. So it pulls a little bit from the 80s also. 1992. You know so it's not we talk about Tony Martin. What's interesting yeah. is that, you know, at this time, so this is 92. So yeah. what, what year was Dehumanizer? Was that 92? Yeah, right around there. I mean, yeah, because uh, Strange Highways came out in 93 and 94 for Dio. That's right. after he left. So it's got to be right around there. 91, 92, I think. So how cool would it have been? And he would have fit right in if Tony Martin right. joined Candlemas for this this period. Right. Yeah. He would have fit right in on those songs. Right. Totally. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And what else did I put down? Uh, Aftermath, acoustic intro. I said it would have fit on Sabbath's Eternal, Eternal Idol. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then I thought I had some AOR hard rock lead guitars too in this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I enjoy this album. That's why it's at my number eight. Yeah. And I think I like the fact that you bring up Eternal Idol because I think also um, this album sounds a lot like those Tony Martin era Sabbath yeah. albums, which are yeah. not all doomy, gloomy, slow, right? There's a lot of right. mid and up tempo stuff on those albums. So it's right along line with those, I think. Yeah. Good, it's a good yeah. solid album, I think. Underrated and I think forgotten by a lot of the fans. Okay. Yeah, it, it could use a good reissue and a remaster, probably. Yeah, so people yeah. Can get a more appreciation of it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right, my number eight is the one that made the most movements up and down in my list uh, while I was working right. on this over the last week or so. I, I I could never figure where to put this one, and uh, and even the next, even my number seven as well. Uh, uh -huh. I when this first came out, 
a lot of us longtime fans were very excited about it. We really dug this when it first came out, but it's funny. I think in the years since it came out in 2005, talking about the reunion album, uh, I honestly think I don't and I don't love it as much as I used to. And I think I like most of the Rob Lowe era stuff just a little bit better. If that mm. it, that's a weird thing to say, right? Because that works. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's still it's a really good record. It really. Yeah. Good. Great. Return. I, I just don't find it all these years later as compelling as the original albums with Messiah. So, you know, this is the classic lineup again, right. which is, you know, Messiah Marcolin on vocals, Lee Fedling on bass, uh, Mats Bjorkman on rhythm guitars, Johan, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Lars Johansson on lead guitars and uh, right. Jan Lind on drums. So that's, that's like the classic lineup of Candlemas. Right. Um, and they're all back together here and it starts off really good. I mean, you got the black dwarf, which is yes. you know, kind of a weird tune, but it's really good. It's fast. Yeah. Uh, Copernicus is brooding and heavy and atmospheric, uh, uh -huh. which is, is great. You got uh, spell Spellbreaker, which is a right. really, really good track. There's really nothing bad on here. No, there's uh, not. I just, for me in revisiting it again, I think it's not quite as magical as those early albums. It's okay. close. It's close. Yeah, it is. But I almost think that, uh, and you know, we've talked about this in numerous different shows and episodes about a lot of these classic bands that, you know, break up and get back together. Sometimes, you know, if there's problems within the band from a personality standpoint, and you kind of force yourselves to kind of do it all again many years later, mm -hmm. sometimes those problems hinder that magic coming back. Like I think uh, like, you know, like Deep Purple is a perfect example. So they get, you know, after all those years, they get back together, they do Perfect Strangers. And, yeah. you know, for the most part, the magic is there and that quickly dissipates very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's almost the case with this. And it's almost like Messiah probably knew, all right, we did the album. It's a pretty damn good album. But, you know, all of a sudden, all those issues that he had yeah. with and came up and that was that, right? Kind of like uh, also accept. In the 90s. Exactly, with Udo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, and maybe to an extent, we just talk about Dehumanizer, right? There as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, not saying that uh, this will never happen again, although I've, mm -hmm. I've heard rumblings within the Candlemas camp that they're never getting back together with Messiah again, but who the hell knows? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I think it's a really strong album. I just... Yes. I originally had this higher up in my list. And then the more I started going through the Rob Lowe era albums, I was like, you know what? I kind of enjoy those a little bit yeah. more, not much, but a little bit more, yeah. but still really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Like, mm -hmm. One of those great like reunion albums, I think that we've gotten in the last uh, 25 yeah. years. Yep. All right. So we're at seven, right? Yep. All right. Going with uh, Psalms of the Dead with Rob Lowe. So it's the last one, like you said. So like we talked about before with the uh, kind of like the purple organ sounds going on in there, the gothic keyboard, it's a little bit of both. They mix it up. Yeah. I like it. Um, Prophet, I thought has like a power metal gallop to it, right? Throughout it. Yep. But then it gets doomy towards the end. Um, let's see. Uh, you got drums that begin the killing of the sun. And I said, could have fit on Headless Cross yeah. from, from Sabbath, another one of those crossovers there. Um, dancing in the temples of tempo. And then I thought there was also um, horror themed keyboards on Lights of Deep. Did you hear that? It yeah. sounded like it could fit on like a horror movie soundtrack. Yeah, like an old Italian giallo film or something like that, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I like this album a lot. It's really so it's good. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the, f you know, the fact that this band throws in you, I like I just mentioned the word gallop, right? And everybody automatically yeah. thinks of something very specific. And right. I like the fact that, uh, I think that's what made these guys so unique in Doom is because they had right. the ability to do that. Yes. Whereas, you know, you, you'll never mistake Candle Mass for like St. Vitus. Right, or Trouble. Right? Or, or Pentagram. I mean, it's, and, and those are great bands. Uh -huh. but that's what made these guys always so different. And I think you, you kind right. of hit the nail on the head. There's that bridge between doom and power metal or neoclassical metal that was always right. kind of there with these right. guys. And yeah. traditional heavy metal and the new wave of British heavy metal, like on the first four albums. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's a good mix. It, it separates them from the batch. It totally does. It totally does. 
All right. My num so as I said before, my number seven is another one that I had a really hard time with where to put it on this damn list. And, uh, and this is, I don't have a physical copy of this. I had it on LP back in the day, but I never uh, replaced it with CD. So I'm going to put the debut Epicus Dumicus Metallicus at number seven. Okay. I don't have any on me either. I ordered, like I told you earlier, I ordered a few of these and tried to get them for the show. Yeah. The remasters, reissues with some bonus tracks and they just didn't come on time. Yeah. It's, the I'm, I'm amazed. Are, that they're hard. Yeah. They, they went out of print. Some of them are hard to find when you want to get them, you know, they're yeah. either out of print or somebody doesn't have them or they're expensive. Yeah. I had them all up until uh, Tales of Creation on LP back in the day, and then I sold my my uh, record collection back in the mid '90s, and I only ever replaced one of those early ones on right. CD. And I, I, but I could have sworn I got I got more of them. So when I was going through and trying to look for all the stuff, I'm like, how do I not have some of these? And I'm like, like you, I'm like, I need to get some of these because they're just this is yeah. like mandatory stuff. Here. So, but yeah, Epicus Dumicus Metallicus, for all of you who wonder what the hell that means, it means epic doom metal. Um, and this is their <laughs> debut album. Uh, at the time, it was the only appearance of Johan Lanquist on vocals. They basically got him in for the session to do the album, but never invited him to actually join the band, which is kind of weird. And how strange is that they call upon him all those years later for, you know, the Door to Doom album. Right. And uh, he finally says, yes, I'll join the band. And I think he sounds even better on the new album than he does on the first album. But the first album is, is classic. Yeah. It's mostly uh, less songs, longer tunes. You got Solitude, yeah. uh, Demon's Gay, Crystal Ball, Under the Oak, all classic Candlemas tunes. Yes. It's just epic riff after epic riff after epic riff. Um, I always liked the debut. So but for me, everything clicked with the second album. Mm -hmm. It's another one of those, you know, uh, I, I did a show with Martin Popoff not long ago about those, you know, debut albums that where the where they're decent, but they pale in comparison to the second album. And I totally like forgot about this one because I for me, this is a perfect example of that of a very solid debut, but the second album just blows it out of the water. So, yeah, I feel that way, too. Yeah. All right. Back to you. Number six. We're at six. Let me say, let me get my notes straight. Six is Ancient Dreams for me. So let's see, that's the third album, yeah. right? Yep. Third album. So the second one, Messiah. Got to get to the track listing here. All right. So uh, you got the Mirror, Mirror, Cry from the Crypt, um, Incarnation of Evil. You got the spoken word in the beginning, which is kind of spooky. I like the artwork too. The painting is great, yeah. Very cool painting. Um, let's see what else. Well, Incarnation, I thought, and the title track, the guitar and the lead vocal follow each other a lot, which Candlemas does that a lot. Yeah, How the vocal do. follows the, the riff that's going on. Um, but it doesn't really go anywhere, I thought. I thought those two songs kind of drag. A lot of long tracks seems, on this album, yeah. Yeah, and it just seems like it doesn't go anywhere doesn't hit like your course that, that you're looking for uh but the rest of the album uh you know i like it it's good it's solid aside from those two just being a little too long and just dragging and kind of going nowhere yeah i think at the at the time and i'll touch on this more when i get to it i think at the time i was a little disappointed in this album because mm. it wasn't quite as good as the one that came before it right and the songs were definitely longer mm -hmm. and at the time I've changed my tune in recent years, but at the time, those really long songs, I was kind of like, oh, come on, get to the point here already, you know? It's uh, Incarna Incarnation of Evil and the title track are seven minutes long, so that's probably why I felt that they just, they just go nowhere, they drag. Yeah, yeah, and, and in 1988, were we, you know, as metal fans, I don't know, me personally, I wasn't gravitating towards seven minute long songs at the time. I I, I appreciated stuff that was, yeah. you know, again, we were used to like Metallica doing it, right? But yeah, Iron Maiden too. And Iron Maiden too. But I think like with, you know, with Candlemass, it's only to me, I remember first instinct with this album is I was kind of like, man, I like this, but some of these tunes are just way too long. And it was just yeah. like a little ponderous in spots. Like I said, yes. I changed, I've changed my tune with this album quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. since then but back in the day if we would have done this back in like 1990 i yeah. would rank the ancient dreams a, a lot lower than i'm going to rank it today so i totally i totally get that i totally get it because that's exactly how i felt back in the day all right my number five um no six sorry uh is going to be the door to doom 
uh, from 2019. I've liked this a lot. This, this to me was, like I said, one of my favorites of 2019. I think Johan sounds great on here. Yeah, it's almost he like I couldn't believe that he was like the singer on this album because I'm like, you listen to this and you listen to that first album. This is the real Johan Langfist, I think. I mm. mean, he's just awesome on here. Yeah. Uh, Splendor, Demon Majesty is amazing. Bridge of the Blinds, uh, like you mentioned, just a lot of cool little flavors in that song. Yeah. Uh, Under the Ocean, House of Doom, the Omega Circle is just like this, just doom bliss from start to finish. Um, and I think uh, Mats and Lars just totally crush it uh on rhythm guitar and lead guitar on this album just the 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 riffs are massive leaf's bass is just so monstrous i mean this is a huge huge sounding record sounding, yeah. and yeah and, and again love the uh the artwork on here it's right. just so cool yeah this whole thing is just like you know dripping evil right so yeah i it's, uh, very, I think it's, uh, bit. it's kind of black metalish looking it totally is. Yeah, it totally is. And uh, I love it. I, you know, when I when I heard this, I'm like, yes, can it's like, you know, I, I was thinking like, and why did this band ever want to retire? I mean, it's so obvious that they have so much left to give yeah. on these last handful of albums. I mean, it's just uh, another one of those bands that we talk and that I never that I always seem to fail to mention. You know, we talk about these like classic bands from the 80s or the 70s who are like almost like they're getting better with age. And we talk about, you know, Saxon and Accept and Priest and all these other bands. We always seem to forget these guys. I mean, right. these guys have been killing it for the last decade. Probably because Doom is not a big genre. That I guess, I guess, yeah. yeah. There's a you know limited number of bands that people go to and it's not, it doesn't bro uh, branch out. It's not as broad as like traditional heavy metal or what sometimes thrash bands can do or progressive or power metal, you know? Yeah. It's a little more, it's a little more limited. With what yeah, they do. I guess. But I, I think, you know, Candlemas needs to be uh, mentioned, you know, when we're talking about bands like Overkill and Testament who just, True. Did, you know, just totally cranking it out uh, here in their <laughs> the latter stages of their career. Yeah. Okay. We're at the top five, right? Top five, yeah. All right. So my five is... Tales of Creation from 1989. So if you get, it depends what CD version you get. I haven't gotten the remaster yet, but if you get the, the one on Metal Blade, it breaks up that one song, the instrumental, into all these parts. Did you ever see that? Was it the original LP like that too, I think? I've, I'm pretty sure it was. I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a long that time. Is, um, that's the instrumental, um, how's it called? Unfathom Tower. Yeah. So it's all chopped up into part one up to part. I don't know what the hell it is, how it's written here. I can't see it. <laughs> but it's broken up into all these parts. So you think it's more songs, but it's just the instrumental yeah. broken up. So you have um, 11 songs, you got three little intros, short little intros. So this album has um, Dark Reflections, Voices in the Wind, like I said, into the Unfathomed Tower, which is almost like a speed power metal prog song. It just comes out of nowhere in the middle of this, this album. It's really different. For them. It's totally prog metal. I mean, they, they, they yeah. took a lot of chances on this album. I think it worked. Yeah, it's like prog and power metal yeah. put together, Yeah, which is nice. It's a nice break you know, throughout the, the uh, album. And then you got um, Edge of Heaven, and the title track are Epic, epic uh, Journeys. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I put this on my five. I like this album a lot. It's really good. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah it's it's up there for me too. Dark, um, Dark Reflections is a great opener. Yes. And I love the cover again. They were going with this kind of like these- Another scenes. great another great painting. Yeah, yeah. Really good, really classy looking stuff. Yeah. And I gotta say, I love their logo too. Uh-huh. Nice font. Yeah, yeah, I dig it. Yeah. So my number five, uh, I'm going to go with Death Magic Doom from 2009, second album with Mr. Lowe on vocals. Uh, I think if it's not as good as it's just underneath uh, for me, as good as uh, King of the Grey Islands, which I thought was a great return to form for these guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of great songs on here. The Bleeding Baroness, so good. So good. <laughs> uh, such a great song. Uh, you got that slow and epic hammer of doom. Uh, I love how these guys like they'll like start off a song really slow and atmospheric and moody, and then all right. of a sudden, boom! In comes it's the riff, like a, like a hammer, and the drums yeah. and that wailing vocal. It's just like oh, yep. so good. 
Yeah, it uh, comes out of nowhere. Uh, exactly. Yeah, they, there's no warning. It's just all of a sudden they just crank right. up. Uh, yeah. You got the really evil sounding Demon of the Deep, uh, House of a Thousand Voices. Again, not a ton of songs, but right. um, just enough. And I think it, it's a great it's album. Great. It get, yeah. And, you know, as someone who was listening to Solitude Eternus before he joined this band, mm -hmm. uh, to me, he, he made perfect sense and he just knocked it out of the park because to him, what really was he doing different? He was singing very similar type stuff in his other band. So he, right. he just had to come in here, learn the old songs and write, help them write new stuff. And it just, it just, it worked on everyone. Yeah. All right. So next I'm going with the self-titled one from 2005. All the same points you said. It's a great, solid return. Um, what do we got here? Uh, Black Dwarf, Assassin of the Light, um, Seven Silver Keys, The Man Who Fell from the Sky is a cool instrumental. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That really, like, it, it repeats, it kind of repeats itself over and over again, but it's nice and, din and, din and din, you know, <laughs> how that rhythm goes. It's cool. And uh, Witches is probably my favorite song on the album. Spellbreaker is yeah. great. Born in a Tank is cool. Yep. Yeah, this was a great solid return from Side. I liked it when it came out. It that's why, that's Didn't why last, it's high for me. Yeah. It's in my five. I could listen to these guys just riff all day, right? Right. It's only it doesn't matter who's singing, just get out there and just yeah. crank it up, man. It's, yeah. It's just <laughs> catchy, catchy riffs, man. Just too, too bad it didn't last, you know, last the one yeah. hour. All right, so my number four, I'm going to go with uh, King of the Grey Islands from 2007. So Messiah is gone. Uh, right. Here you got Robert Lowe coming in from Solitude Eternus. Um, I think the band sounds reinvigorated. There's you know, a lot of songs on here. This, uh, you know, they're pushing the envelope of the you know, CD era big time, but it's not boring at all. Uh, Emperor of the Void is great. Devil Seed. Uh, you mentioned Demonia Six. Love that. Uh, Destroyer just crushes. Uh, and yes. I absolutely totally dig Embracing the Sticks. Great album closer for them. Uh, for me, not a bad song on this album. I think Robert sings his ass off on here. It's mm -hmm. so heavy. And, uh, you know, again, if you go back in time, you know, a lot. we were all bummed when Messiah flew the coop once again. And we're like, yeah. oh, man, now what are they going to do? You know, and then I heard that uh, Robert had joined the band. I was kind of like, all right, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Let's hear the album. And it did not disappoint. So. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. What are we at? Um, three? Number three. Top three. So that's where my death magic doom falls in. I love this. This is so yeah. good. It's such a great balance of melody and heavy. He's such a great singer. Some of my favorite songs from um, Candlemaster on this that are always in my playlists. Um, Hammer of Doom, I love the Bleeding Bar uh, Baroness, Demon of the Deep, and the two closers, one of the albums, one of the few times like an album has two great closers back to back. You got Clouds of Dementia and My Funeral Dreams. I love those two. The way they flow, you know, they're catchy, but they're heavy and they're hooky and you can sing it. Great, excellent closers. I love this album. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, not a bad one on it. Yeah, I mean, you, those three albums with him on vocals are, are all just spectacular. And I actually saw them for this tour. I got to see Where them. Where did they play? This. I'm trying to remember because I saw them back in the day with Messiah, like back in the 80s. And then yeah. I, I'm almost positive I saw them one at a time. And I'm trying to remember. It may have been with Robert on vocals. I don't even I don't remember. I need to see so many shows over the years. It's kind of. I know, right? I don't I don't I didn't see them here in America. Actually, I'll show you a little poster I got here. Well, it's a big poster. I saw them at a festival over in Spain. Ah, okay. Which is the, I think it's what became Rock Barcelona, I think, because it was in Spain. It was called Metal Way at the time. It was 2009. But I, if you guys can see the poster, I mean, this poster is huge. I ripped it off the wall. <laughs> but if you can see the lineup that was on there. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's two different nights. So can you see all the names that are there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then you got... This other night, two nights. Wow. It was insane. Well, you know, your, all the European festivals have insane lineups. Yeah. There's a little so bit then, every little bit something for everybody on there. Yeah. So the day that they played, Candle Mass played with Destruction, Primal Fear, Pretty Maids, and Dark Tranquility. Wow. That's an interesting collection of bands there. And then you got Tesla in there. 
you know, Queens, right? They got a great variety over in the European festivals. Yeah. We unfortunately so, yeah, don't get see, that here. No, you don't. So I got to see them once. And then if you can see the other half, that, can you see the bands there? Yep. Riot, the Thundersteel reunion. I mean, how cool. L.I.L., Sodom, yep. John Elias <laughs> Payne. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That was great. So, yeah, I got to see them once. Yeah, I, I need to go look in my uh, ticket collection. Because, I, like I said, I know I saw them in the 80s. I saw them at L'Amour. Um on either the Nightfall or the Ancient Dreams tour. And it was, it was amazing. I mean, Messiah's like, you know, he was wearing like this like white like, robe. robe and his hair was yeah. just like everywhere. So he's up yeah. there and every time he moves, the hair yeah. goes all over the place. It was just wild right. and they were so, <laughs> so heavy. But I'm yeah. almost positive I saw them with Rob Lowe because I know they played like at BB Kings or, America. or Gramercy. Yeah like you know it during one of these uh, albums yeah. here so but i don't i don't remember i'd have to go back and look but um anyway my number three is gonna be tales of creation from 89 so uh, again this is the last album with messiah until many many years later um mm. it's like rich mentioned before it's a huge sounding album with the mix of like the slower stuff and the fast-paced you know uh kind of new wave of british, british heavy metal things but i love also like you did i love the fact that they mix a little kind of prog metal and power metal in there i mean that that yeah. instrumental uh into the unfathom tower is really yeah. different for them it works so totally. different dark reflections yeah. is great uh they do that new version of under the oak which arguably is better than from the first album first album and, i thought so yeah yeah, um, and then you got, you know, The Edge of Heaven and the title track, which are really epic and that's just a really, really good album with mm -hmm. just massive riffs. So the guitar work just sounds like it's exploding from the speakers. I mean, these those two guys created some, some kick-ass guitar sounds over the years together. So that's my number three. Okay, so number two, I'm going with the debut. Just not, not just because it's a classic, I just like it because it doesn't get too long either and they don't have all the intros going on as well yeah. i think it's just simple and to the point so that's why i enjoy it too so i think my favorites off of this are i mean really everything is great i can say everything is my favorite off of it but i'll go with under the oak crystal ball is probably my favorite just really love that and demon's gate and solitude awesome this is this is definitely a lesson in where you start off with doom metal i would say this album because before it gets to a layered and elaborate you know, with what they did with their doom, this is like simplistic, but not too simplistic. It starts at the beginning, you know, where you go to your doom for your roots. Yep. And a good chunk of these songs just became, you know, constants in their set list. So, yes. you know, yeah, a lot of classics on here. Mm -hmm. All right. My number two. And again, uh, I hinted at it before. Uh, if you would, if we would have had this conversation, you know, 30 years ago, it wouldn't rank this high. But uh, Ancient Dreams for me over the years has really kind of solidified itself as one of my favorites and i've grown to love the longer tracks whereas back in the day i was kind of like all right this album's kind of boring me a little but there's some i mean you know you got the awesome mirror mirror i mean that's a total a great opener I love that mm -hmm. uh you got uh the galloping a cry from the crypt great song yeah paradise is crushing but it's really memorable and catchy um great vocals from messiah on this album mm -hmm. uh, and then i love bearer of pain that's got just such a memorable chorus. And then you got the Bells of Asheron, which is kind of, you know, kind of fasty, a little speedy for these guys. So they they kind of yeah. mixed it up here on this album, which uh, I think I've really grown to appreciate. And, you know, that painting on the front is just absolutely masterful. So uh, that's my yeah. number two. I think I know what our, both of our number ones is. Right. Which, again, we're, we have the same brain again. We've done this a few times. We have, yeah. We Especially have. with our five, you know, you could just shuffle our five on several countdowns and we have all the same stuff. Yeah, basically. So uh, there we have another uh, beautiful painting. Beautiful painting, and it's it's funny because it's it's beautiful. There's not much going on here, but there doesn't need to be. It's right. Just, uh, I don't remember it's buying. This on. It's yeah, very haunting totally looking. And there's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, th these guys are pretty young back in the day. In fact, I think if I remember yeah. correctly, so this was what the '87, the Nightfall album came out. So I don't. I think these guys were either my age or younger when this album came out so 87 oh. it was i was 21 and uh, they were right about the same age so you know you see this and they, they were just kids like all of us right yeah and uh 
is it that's the thinnest i think that messiah has ever been <laughs> i'm but, trying to uh, find the artist i remember looking him up and i saw him he's a famous artist actually that, the, yeah, that painting. yeah i'm trying to uh, artwork and layout by mickey martinson it's based off of based on thomas cole's painting the voyage of life yeah and so you can see Messiah here with the black robe, okay, and the yep. big hair. This is basically what they looked like at the time if you went to see them live. Um, yeah, just... That's my number one, too. I mean, it, was there ever a question, right? I mean, it's just... Right. This, I think... It's... Yeah, and I, I love, too... Um, there's one, two... There's four instrumentals. I love the way that bridges songs and it begins things and it ends the album with black candles. It makes it like a complete listening experience, I think. Yeah. That's why it's so good as well. You have to wonder, though, should they have done that on subsequent albums, though? You know, because I think sometimes right. they did that a little much, but it uh, really works on this album. It does. This album I wrote down, this is music for a candle mass, using a Ouija board, <laughs> rituals, funerals, witch burnings, and seances. Yeah, basically. Right? Yeah. That's how this sounds with those intros and instrumentals and just the way the songs flow. And you got um, the Well of Souls on here at the gallows end and Bewitched are just so great. Yeah. Whole Dark, great. Dark of the Veils of, of Death. Of death. Yeah. Jeez. Yep, seven minute long, Ugh. which has a nice movement to it too. Yeah. These, these songs also, if they're slow, they don't stay slow. Right. They change tempos a little bit too, which is yeah. great about this album as well. Yeah. So this I is really- it's like the blueprint. Those monstrous riffs are on this album. Yeah. And the guitar solos from Lars are like explosive. I mean, because he was, uh, I, I had read back in the day that he was uh, either friends with or he was an admirer of Ingve, right? So there's kind of like this neoclassic well, right. he does on there. Yeah. Right? Uh, right. But, it's, but it's purposeful. It's not like it's just random. Absolutely. It works, it works for the song, which is very important. Yeah. 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 I mean, as a, as a huge Sabbath fan, at the time and still am um, yeah when i heard this album i like completely lost my shit yeah i remember it too like that thing ever i did the first time i yeah. heard this album i was like holy and nobody was doing this at the time this is what year is this one this 87. is 87 so you know you had thrash you had traditional metal you had glam and hair metal and hard rock metal and yeah you know a couple prog bands but not too many really yeah you know like fate's warning and queen's Reich. Other than that, who was on MTV that was doomed? No, Candlemass and, Candle and Trouble. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. And the only other band that you could even remotely come that can come close to this, but they weren't a doom band, was Sabotage. I mean, Hall of the Mountain King came out in '87 too. So just just imagine, yeah. I, I in '87, the White Snake '87 album, Hall of the Mountain right. King, and this album, I listened to constantly. Those it's a were great like, call. Yes, the soundtrack to 1987 for me. Those are three big ones, absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing the power of the guitar riff all over all right. Them, right? Yeah. Yes, indeedy. Well, there you have it, everybody. Uh a dozen candle mass albums. You know, I mean, we could we could have made a four-hour show to talk about all the various EPs and things that they have, and there's a lot of right. them. But uh some really, really strong albums. I mean, you know, we 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 yeah. talked about two of them being definitely the weakest of the crop, but they're not terrible either. Um, but man, the other 10, yeah, solid, yeah, me, you know, yep. And if the Rob Lowe era is underappreciated for you, you got to rediscover because it's so good, yeah, yeah. And I need to, I need to circle back with what's been going on with him because it's like, you know, you would, you would assume that once he left Candlemas, he would go back and resurrect Solitude Eternus, but I don't mm. know if that, if that ever happens or not. I need to check that out because that's a really, yeah, good I don't know. so. Yeah. Anyway, there you have it, everybody. Uh, ranking the albums of Candlemass. So feel free to do the same in the comments below. Give us uh, your top 12, your top 10, your top five, whatever you want to do. Uh, remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. We all hear these albums differently. I think most of us can agree that uh, a good chunk of these albums are pretty damn good to even spectacular. So yeah. uh, there you have it. Uh, Rich, you want to talk about uh, some plug, give some plugs and things like that? Um, where uh, else they can sure. find Yeah. So I write for Metal Asylum. Brave Words Magazine and the Metal Hall of Fame. And I do your uh, Monsters Den as well, which we yes, have one coming up, which we got one coming up in a week or two. 
That's right. So in about a week, uh, Rich and myself and, of course, Chris Allo will be giving you guys another Monsters Den episode. And it's uh, by request. Uh, we're going to be doing the when nature attacks, when animals attack type of things. Yeah. Those classic horror films where you get some, you know, big animal or, or small animal that right. uh, wreaks havoc on mankind. So we'll be kind of doing that uh, over the next week. So uh, stay yeah. tuned for that and a lot more. And uh, for Rich Catino, I am Pete Pardo. This is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube. All the damn time. That's right. There we go. Thanks, guys. Cheers. As I drink coffee out of my... And for those of you on the East Coast, uh, stay safe for the, uh, the snowstorm, and uh, we'll see you guys all real soon. Take care. Yep. Thanks.